I'm Jim O'Loughlin with the Department of Languages and Literatures at the University of Northern Iowa, and this is The Digital Turn. So what do we mean by digital fiction? Well, it is something different than an electronic book that you might read on a Kindle or iPad. Digital fiction makes use of a range of multimedia tools in order to relate a narrative. And while we may be awash in a world of images, videos, and texts, many people will find something unique in the works that Kate Pullinger has created with the digital artist Chris Joseph. What's different is the way in which the written text in these works is merged together with images, sounds, video, and even some video game elements. Now on the surface, that may sound like a description of very experimental fiction, and at one time, maybe that would have been true. But what I'm guessing you will find is that the combination of approaches in Kate Pullinger's work remains very accessible. In fact, in the case of Inanimate Alice, we have a work designed for kids. Inanimate Alice has many of the features that we tend to associate with young adult fiction, such as a child protagonist that readers follow through first-person narration. I would venture that this work will seem very normal to digital natives, a term that refers to those who have grown up with the internet. I was struck that when I first started, started teaching Inanimate Alice, some of my students complained about problems they had navigating the narrative. But then I had my ni then nine-year-old daughter take a look at it, and she had absolutely no problems at all. And in fact, she actually taught me about some features I had missed the first time around. So I want to make the case that what we should find most unusual about Inanimate Alice is that it is not unusual for this moment in history. But that said, I should note some, moments, some features of this type of digital novel that make it different than conventional print fiction. Let's say I was recommending a print novel for you to read. Coincidentally, let's say Kate Pullinger's great 2009 novel, The Mistress of Nothing. I would not feel compelled to explain the mechanisms of reading a book. All right, when you see the front cover, turn the page. Good, you got that? Okay, now keep turning, keep turning until you get to where the text of the novel starts, and then I want you to start reading in the upper left-hand corner of the page. That would be a little odd, right? Okay, maybe it would be more than a little odd. But the only reason it would seem so weird is that there are standard conventions for reading print novels and the physical process of reading a book that we've all come to accept. Now, there is no such uniform standard for digital novels, or even between different chapters of a work of digital fiction. Part of what you have to do as a reader is figure out how to navigate the text. And this text is set up so that the rules sometimes change. Sometimes you click an arrow, but other times you have to click a blinking box on the image of a phone, or you need to pass your cursor over a passing graphic. You may find this navigational challenge either intriguing or frustrating, but it makes the experience of reading such texts unique. And safe to say, one could argue that these multimedia texts may more accurately speak to the experience of readers who spend a lot of time surfing the web. So let's turn to the works themselves. And there are links to these works available on the Digital Turn site. Inanimate Alice is a young adult digital novel that follows a girl, Alice of course, as she lives with her parents in a variety of countries and situations. Multimedia is not just something used to tell Alice's story, it is also an important part of Alice's experience. Alice herself is a digital native, someone who is adept with digital tools and uses them to make sense of her world. I encourage you to pay particular attention to the character of Brad and the role he plays in Alice's story. Now, Inanimate Alice has become recognized as an important educational resource, particularly for teaching digital literacy was named a 2012 Best Resource for Teaching and Learning by the American Association of School Librarians, and I find it a great way to introduce people to the possibilities of electronic literature. But digital novels aren't just for kids. Kate Pullinger and Chris Joseph have also collaborated on an adult digital novel, Flight Paths. Flight Paths differs from Inanimate Alice in that it involves multiple protagonists, and it is a more demanding narrative in which seemingly impossible things occur. Or at least we as readers can't fully be sure quite what has happened. But like Inanimate Alice, Flight Path uses digital tools such as flash animation to not only tell a story, but to set a tone and to put us into the world of the characters.
I encourage you to follow the links in order to read both of these digital novels for free and to join us either in person or electronically for Kate Pollinger's lecture titled Literature Online, How the Internet is Transforming Fiction. That's happening as the University of Northern Iowa kicks off this year's Merrill Hurst Lecture Series. Kate Pullinger's lecture is on October 22nd at 7 p.m. in the Commons Ballroom on the UNI campus, but we plan to record that lecture and stream it here through this website. And this is just the start of a year-long series that will include fascinating speakers, including Cheryl Ball and Stephen Johnson. So check out the Digital Turn site for more information, and I hope you'll be back for more. On behalf of the Department of Languages and Literatures, I hope you'll find the Digital Turn a turn worth taking.